Number 18. Under certain conditions, molecules of acetic acid, which is CH3COOH, form dimers, which are pairs of acetic acid molecules held together by strong intermolecular attractions. And then they give us the molecule for acetic acid. And now here comes the question. We have to draw a dimer of acetic acid showing how two CH3COOH molecules are held together. And then state the type of IMF, which is intermolecular force, that is responsible for this. All right. So first things first is I'm just going to draw one of these. Now remember, we have to form a dimer, which means that I need a pair, which means that I, I you know, a total of two acetic acid molecules have to be drawn. But we will start with drawing one of them. So I have an H that's bound to a C that's bound to an H, that's bound to an H, and then I have a C. I'm going to draw it just like they have here. And that's a double bonded O. And now I have a oxygen and a hydrogen. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to make sure that I have my octets on all of my elements. So in this case, the elements that I just need to fix a little bit are the oxygens, because the carbons have eight electrons, so that's all good. But the oxygens here, they just are showing four electrons, two bonds, which is four electrons. So I'm just going to um, draw in the lone pairs here. And the same thing for this oxygen. One, two, maybe I'll do it on this side. One, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So now I want to try to form a strong intermolecular attraction. Now just know that there are a total of three intermolecular forces. And the lower down you go, as far as the way that I wrote them, the stronger the force. So as you start picking up intermolecular forces from dispersion to dipole-dipole to hydrogen bond, you're going to increase your boiling point and your melting point and you're going to have strong attractions between molecules that are the same. So these uh, forces come from polarity. These come from your electronegative elements on the periodic table. Now, if I just draw a standard box, which is just going to depict the electronegativity, remember... And I will just bring this over a little bit. There we go. And remember that as you're going from left to right on the periodic table, your electronegativity is going to be increasing. So between hydrogen, which is on the left side, then comes carbon, then comes oxygen. Oxygen is the most electronegative element out of acetic acid. And since it's the most electronegative, right, it's got electronegativity. The one that's the most electronegative gets the partial negative sign. So for these oxygens, I'm just going to put that they have the partial negative. The partial, the dipole, has this little like weird S shape. So I'm going to put that this is the negative and so is this guy, partial negative. Now, in terms of the other elements that are surrounding the oxygen, if oxygen is the partial negative out of the bond, the other ones have to be the partial positive. So since oxygen is more electronegative, this hydrogen is have to be the partial positive, meaning that the electrons that are in this bond are not equally shared. The electrons will always be favored towards the more electronegative element. But now we have to form this dimer. So we now have to bring in two uh, actually, we have to bring in one more acetic acid molecule. And the way that these attractions are is that opposites attract. Negatives are going to be very, very, very attracted to positives of other molecules. And likewise, the positive is going to be very, 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 very attracted to the negative of another molecule. So... If I only have two acetic acids, what element would this oxygen be attracted to on the other acetic acid molecule? Well, it's got to be on the outside, meaning that it's got to be, you know, on the outside of the molecule. Can't be anything inside because there's no room to be attracted there. 
But just know that the hydrogen is the most partial positive because it's bound to the, the most electronegative element. So this oxygen is going to want to form an attraction, and we label attractions as dashed lines. We can't give them a full line because that means that it's a full covalent bond. But attractions, intermolecular forces, are always uh, dashed lines. So this partial negative oxygen is going to want to hook up with the uh, partial positive hydrogen from the other acetic acid. And now let's do the same thing for the partial positive. Well, this, this element's hanging out over here. So chances are this is going to want to make an attraction between the partial, you got it, the partial negative oxygen. Do you see how that works, right? They kind of like swapped places. This hydrogen on this molecule is now up here, and this oxygen is down here. So basically now we're just going to draw the other acetic acid. The hydrogen, which was this one, was bound to the oxygen, which was then bound to a carbon, which had that double bonded O. And look how, look how that comes out like that. This carbon was bound to another carbon that has the one, two, three hydrogens. Let's just fill in those lone pairs. Um, this oxygen has the two lone pairs, and this oxygen has the two lone pairs. And it actually is the lone pairs of the oxygen that is doing the attracting. And there is your dimer. Now all we have to do here is just state the type of IMF, which is the intermolecular force. Now as we can see here, we are specifically having attractions between OH molecules, right? I have an OH and an OH. Anytime that you see that you have an OH or an HO bond, you can always hydrogen bond. This is the strongest intermolecular force, and we can see it purely here in acetic acid. When you have an OH, you can hydrogen bond so maybe I'll just put HB, to the other oxygen, in this case, uh, of the other molecule. So you have two hydrogen bonds here, which will strengthen the attractions between the acetic acid molecules. So the type of intermolecular force here is the hydrogen bond that's doing majority of the work. This molecule also has dipole-dipole attractions, but that is not the uh, specific attraction that is here. Clearly, since we're talking about the OH bond, it is the hydrogen bond that's pulling the work here. And that is the final answer. All right. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Thank you so much for all your support throughout this whole journey, and thank you so much for your kind comments. Um, Let's just, let's just keep rocking and rolling, all right? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.